What's up, leaders? Hey, I just wanted to talk to you for just a, a minute or two here. Well, maybe a little bit more than a minute or two, but uh, not more than 10. I try to stay around 10 minutes or less. But I wanted to talk to you about consistency. Consistency. And the verse that I was going to read to you and just kind of talk about just for a few moments is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And uh, that verse says this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, these uh, great verse, okay? And so he says, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. I like that word. It's kind of a strange word. It means to be sitting or to be sedentary. Does it mean to be lazy? That's not the picture he's painting. He's painting a picture of a man or a woman that's sitting in a chair, and they're not going anywhere. Okay, so we're sitting, we're planted, sedentary. No one can move me, no one can push me. I'm not getting up, I'm not shifting, I'm steady. He goes further and he uses another word, unmovable, which is basically the same word. Can't be pushed, can't be shoved. So the first word, steadfast, gives you the picture of a man or woman sitting in a chair with no intentions of getting up. The second word is unmovable. So you see someone trying to push no, I'm not moving. So I'm not moving myself. You're not moving me. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Now, I like that. Now, listen, all of this is connected to the work of the Lord. Be steadfast in the work of the Lord. Be unmovable in the work of the Lord. Abound in the work of the Lord. And the word abound here, abounding in the work of the Lord, that phrase, it means to go past a measurement. In other words, whatever you think is required of you, go beyond that. Whatever is upon your heart, push further in the ministry. You know, it's, it's beautiful, always abounding. Let God use us even more than what we ever dreamed of. Let us go beyond the measurement. He said, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So God is keeping track of everything. Consistency. That was the, the word that was on my heart for the leaders. Uh, Revival Tabernacle today was consistency. Now, we come from a background, there's no consistency. We shift jobs on a whim, uh, job after job, moving here, moving there, shifting churches, uh, looking at people's relationships. It's this one and the breakup. I'm in love with this one and then go over here. And, and it's just this never-ending cycle of change and movement and there's no consistency. And when that happens, it reflects the heart. It reflects the heart. And one of the things that happens is when you come out of sin, when you come out of drugs, addiction, the things that we came out of, you know, promiscuous sex, just rampant partying and drinking, there's that con constant movement, you know. It, there's no consistency in it. And so then when we get saved, we still have some of those tendencies. And so instead of going from bar to bar, or woman to woman, we find other things. And we're just never satisfied. That's one of the reasons Revival Tabernacle has not launched yet. Because everybody thought that we were going to achieve heaven on earth, a utopic society, you know, have 14 zillion people in the whole city saved in, in six years. Because no one, very few people connected to us has ever done anything consistently for six years. And so people get tired and they get bored. They get weary. So you, you put them over a ministry, I could put you, me over a ministry, you over a ministry. And if it doesn't just whatever in a moment or when you hit a, a plateau or even a decline, then we're going to shift. We're going to do something else because we don't like to face our problems. We don't like to fight through things, learn the lessons, improve on that. We just stop, withdraw or stop, do something else. And we're always on the move, always shifting, always doing something else, always uh, you know, picking up something else, going from here to there, doing this, doing that, anything except the work of the Lord. You have to be steadfast. You have to be unmovable and you have to always abound in the work of the Lord. And that is what I would like to encourage you guys about today. Let's change our philosophy. Let's get engaged. Let's get busy and be consistent. Stay at it. A little bit consistently is a whole lot better than a lot for just a, a moment. You know, it's, it's been one of the plagues here at the tabernacle is just consistency, consistency, staying at it. You know, that's, you know, 
people call me a homebody. Other people, they, they're never home. You know, they're always gone. And you never, you know, it seems like they're always on the move. And they're never steady, never, never, you know, satisfied or settled where they're at. Well, I'm like a homebody. I, that's all I want to do. I have to make myself get out, which that can be a, that can be a problem too. And it can also uh, speak to other problems, other things. But that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You know, the ministry, this is not a speedboat. Revival Tabernacle is not a speedboat. It's a cruise ship, if, if, you know, a, a, a large battleship. You can't make a turn on a dime. It has to be slow. Because if you turn a battleship, a cruise ship, a massive vessel quickly, it'll flip over. You know, we're not a speedboat. We're not zigzagging. That's not what we're about. We're in this for the long run. And so I want to see the saints here get serious about the work of the Lord. You know, you've got a lot of stuff going on. You're working, you're working overtime, you've got families, you've got children, and worldly things. And I don't mean that in a necessarily a bad way, but worldly things. We've got school. I'm getting ready to go to school, too. I mean, I'm, uh, I mean I'm, I'm going back hopefully this fall. I mean, I'm like 98% sure I'll take my ACT in April when I get back from Malawi. I'll be studying all of February, all of March, and and trying to get my math skills honed in and, and try to, you know, do a, do a decent job on that ACT. I, I mean, I want to get in the high 20s, at least, mid-20s. I don't know. We'll see. I'm an old man, and my brain ain't working like it used to, but I'm going to work hard. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to do something else, too, with my life. I mean, I'm just like you. I mean, I, I need to figure out a way to support my wife and my children, just like you are. But what do I do? Do I go to school, quit coming to church? You know, do I stop pastoring? I'm not going to do that. I plan on running for mayor of the city one day. That's going to require a lot of time, but I'm going to still come to church. I'm going to still work for God. We're going to still have ministry. So we're all busy. I, I'm busy. We're, you know, we all got our things going on, and there's nothing wrong with that. You have to survive. You have to live. But are we working for the Lord? That's the question that I, you know, are we working for the Lord? What are you doing for God right now? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Listen, you're not a servant if you're not serving. You're not working for God if you're not working for God. And I know that a lot of us from where we came from, if I said, what are you doing for God? They'll say, well, I dress holy. <laughs> you know, like that's working for God. That's not working for God. You know, make, you know modesty, uh, representing being an ambassador. But an ambassador, an ambassador, United States ambassador to China, to wherever, they're going to walk into those meetings dressed nicely with a suit and tie. They're going to have their best on. But they're not just going to walk in there and sit down and say, okay, I showed up with my suit on. Well, that's not work. That's just presenting yourself in a way that you can work. If an ambassador walked into a, a meeting room with Chinese, you know, leaders and, you know, generals or whatever dress like a bum, they're not going to take him seriously. They're not going to let him in the room. So that man or woman has to come in there appropriately dressed, but they've got to have something to say. They've got to have a mission. And so there's things that we do. There's things that we don't do. But that's not serving God. Serving God is action. Now, all of us have served God at some capacity at some time. But one of the problems, like right now, you know, we're needing to start a children's church so our children, our little ones, can be taught. Sunday school just kind of didn't pan out for us here, um, which is fine. Sunday school don't pan out in a lot of places, you know. So we did away with Sunday school. You know, if, if it ain't working, then you don't do it. But we still need to teach our children. And we're limited on what we can do right now because we don't have enough people to serve in that capacity. So I need you to step up, join a, a, a children's church working team. Every other Sunday, you'll be laboring and ministering. We need nursery classes. We need preteen classes but because I don't have enough staff. You know, we're going to try to do our preteen class on Wednesday evenings for right now with Brother Rusty. Thank God for that. But we got a lot of work to do. Uh, Springtime's coming. And we're going to need to knock some doors and do what we've been called to do. And so I'd like to encourage you guys that have kind of backtrack and some of you that have been so faithful god bless you let's just keep on keeping on and let these th these words encourage you to be more keep being consistent just keep on going i know you got a lot going on too you're working you're going to school you got families but you're right here and i i salute you and so to all of our leaders out there just check yourself are you steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord
Are you working for God? That's the question. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I hope this uh, inspires you, encourages you, challenges you a little bit. Maybe it's a, a little bit of an admonishing. Uh, hopefully not a rebuke. It wasn't my intention. Just want to try to encourage you and shake you up a little bit. But I'm 10 minutes in. I'll talk to you later.